Soil is a dynamic material that experiences various stresses and loads throughout its history. A soil is loaded, unloaded and reloaded and again unloaded and reloaded many times in its past. The pressure experienced by the soil particles due to load acting on soil is called effective stress. The maximum effective stress that a soil has ever experienced in its history is called preconsolidation stress and the soil is called preconsolidated. Preconsolidation stress is denoted by many different names such as preconsolidation pressure, pre-compression pressure, pre-compaction stress, preload stress and over-consolidation pressure. Preconsolidation in a soil deposit may be the result of both natural and human activities such as deposition, erosion, surface drying, construction or mining activities. Preconsolidation may occur when soil layer is consolidated under a large pressure of deposition, vegetation, construction and other things. And later, some of the load gets removed by desiccation, erosion, dismantling or other processes. Determination of the value, the magnitude of preconsolidation stress is crucial for geotechnical engineers. As only after its value is known, we can estimate whether the soil will behave as normally consolidated soil or over consolidated soil. And knowing this is particularly important for finding the expected settlement of foundations and embankments. Preconsolidation stress cannot be measured directly but can be estimated using a number of different strategies and several empirical procedures that have been proposed. The most popular is the one suggested by A. Kessagrand. The Kessagrand method is a graphical technique to estimate the preconsolidation stress from the void ratio and log of effective stress curve obtained from the consolidation test. We have discussed this test in our previous video. For the test, we collect a soil specimen from a natural soil deposit. First, we remove the overlying unwanted material from the soil layer. This may cause an expansion of the soil due to a reduction in its overburden pressure. Then, we take out our soil sample and place it in the consolidometer. We load the sample with different weights and keep a record of change in the height of soil sample. Afterward, we unload the sample and continue to record its expansion. With the obtained data, we plot a graph between the void ratio and effective stress. Here, we draw only part of the curve for better clarity. And full curve has been discussed earlier. We observe this particular type of curve that begins with a flatter portion followed by an inflection point and then a straight line with a steep slope. The flatter part of the curve represents the soil's recompression phase under loads lower than its historical maximum. The steeper part indicates the soil is compressed under loads greater than it has previously experienced. In the flatter part, the soil is in over-consolidated state or pre-consolidated state. In the steeper part, the soil is in normally consolidated state. When the soil changes from over-consolidated to normally consolidated state, the curve exhibits a transitional range that appears as a distinct knee or inflection point. 
the past maximum load known as pre-consolidation stress lies somewhere within this range. To obtain that, we determine a point by the judgment of I on the curve, say point A, where the curvature is maximum. Then we draw a tangent to the curve at this point A and name it as AB. At point A, we draw a horizontal line AC. This way we obtain an angle between these two lines. Now we bisect this angle by drawing an angle bisector AD. After that, we trace back the straight line portion of the curve so that it intersects the bisector AD at point P. We drop a vertical on the log of effective stress axis and that is the pre-consolidation stress sigma prime C of the soil. There are of course some limitations of this Casagrande method of obtaining the pre-consolidation stress. We can obviously point out that interpretation of the point of maximum curvature is very subjective. Also the accuracy of determining pre-consolidation stress with this method is highly influenced by the accuracy of consolidation test data received. Still, Casagrande method is widely used as it is a relatively simple technique. Support elementary engineering on Petrum and get access to the questions I solved related to many different topics. Also your support will help me continue creating more such valuable content. You can find the links of the books and other sources I referred for the creation of this video in the description. Read Determination of Pre-Consolidation Pressure at elementaryengineeringlibrary.com All the links are in the description. Thank you.